gentlemen. It's not the first time that we are uh, facing transformation. Some people say that in Poland the transformation which began after 1989 is still in progress. But we have uh, the new uh, event, this is urbanization, inter the internet, and internationalization. It has all impact on our lives. And today it seems that the transformation towards sustainable life, economy, development will be slightly different. Tell me, what kind of difference will we have? Where is the challenge, really? Professor, begin. The previous transformations was um, about the fact that we uh, operated in a non-market economy. It was called differently, like the uh, centrally, centrally managed, planned, uh, different names. All of it uh, underline one aspect of a problem, but it, what really counts is that in this uh, economy, we didn't have any market mechanism, which has a lot of advantages such as by competition it imposes innovation looking for better solutions but first of all its driving force is entrepreneurship it cannot be possibly initiated with no market um, mechanism and private sector so all of it was um, away from us one of the most outstanding economists of our part of the world Janusz Kornay an elderly uh, gentleman, I, who's my friend, it's my honor, he made an analysis of 100 biggest uh, events in economy and innovation. All of them uh, were in the field of private economy, market economy, even if invented in such a country like Poland. So the biggest innovative success was the Rubik uh, Cube. And um, why did we have to go towards the market economy? Well, we had to. And this transformation was done successfully. We are an open economy, market economy, in full extent of the world. We are not an emerging market anymore. The problem is, however, that it's not what the transformation should be about. The market transformation went well. But when we look at how our state operates, our education, the healthcare sector, just look at the consequences in the environment, and we see very clearly that we arrived at the moment where this driving force from the market is not pulling us anymore. Partly, it's reflected in social opinion, in what people feel, in their convictions. Unfortunately, they are against the market, against the transformation, which is why we need a new kind of thinking about our problem in the global context. And uh, please maintain this question uh, and ask them to the uh, president. But I want, I would later want to continue. Thank you. Meeting professor in this circumstance is, is an honor to me and a challenge to me. I'm a practitioner, although I have a, a background in economy. Uh, and now I'm on a stage with one of the most outstanding economists in Poland. I feel a little bit uh, embarrassed. So now I fully agree that this uh, driving force for transformation which accompanied us in the first transformation, it came to its end. It's not enough. And it's not enough for the um, community to get richer. And this new um, stimuli may be what a pandemic showed us, that we need to care for the world in a different world than before. We need to be more responsible, more reasonable. And if this does not happen, then we'll have natural catastrophes which we've never seen before. Pandemic was a shock kind of therapy, which evoked a recession in Poland and globally. It was unforeseen, and the world never coped before because we never had this type of experience. It made us aware what the uh, environmental degradation may lead to, and also in a dual way kind of. On the one hand, you may probably combine pandemic with the environmental degradation. However, we don't have any proof of that. And on the other side, pandemic and lockdowns, they evoked the uh, nature to operate differently 
differently. We all heard about animals who all of a sudden got visible, about fish who came back to our rivers. We started to hear how the birds sing in big cities. And my hope is that it made us all aware that if we are not fully involved in the nature protection and climate protection. If we don't change our business operations to uh, more responsible, then we'd be having a lot of problems which might be unsolvable, which is that we have a completely new situation and different type of motivators should push us forward. Yeah, for this transformation, I just want us to use the word regeneration. It's now becoming trend and I will try to explain. Uh, it's not only about transition. It's not only about us going or jumping with Balcerovic from the non-market economy to the market economy, from the moon economy to a real economy. <clears throat> it's not just a transition, but it's about changing everything to so something which has a part of deep restructuring. But it's also the completely transformation, but regeneration means different perspective on our capacities, on our resources, on what is there in our responsibility for which we are responsible. And this perspective has to be looked for inward. The regeneration process comes upwards, uh, as close to our resources as possible, but it has to be coordinated upwards. Now, what do we need to see in this regeneration? Some key aspects, well, technological change to begin with. Deep, irreversible technological change. This is what I want to talk least about. But it's uh, obvious that whenever we talk about food industry, which is in scope of our interest or agriculture as such, this industry has to undergo deep change about energy. It's technological change. I want to say it very clearly. This economy is, uh, consumes way too much energy. Nobody will allow for that because the energy will be too expensive and it won't be there. And also, it's about restructuring, market business restructuring. The fact that you need to find new ways of selling, how to contact your consumers. And also, this is environmental regeneration. If we don't regenerate the environment, we'll suffer from lack of water, which is not just the pro problem of the south of Europe. No, it's a problem everywhere, and it will be growing. Well, I could add more problems here, but we need also social regeneration, something what the previous speaker said, that we need to change uh, the way we eat, what we eat. But it's also about change of relations between people, mutual uh, references, and also we need the cultural change in our attitude. And I want to say very clearly that everything has to transform together, not one after one, not step by step, but all of them at once. Which is why the key is an answer to the question, what is of highest importance to the process? I want to say that the, we have four main principles. Principle number one, the productivity of uh, resources. And efficiency is the, the other thing. And also, I remember the motto of General Motors, who was very arrogant and he was smiling that General Motors is not for the cars, but for making money. Well, the fact that we focus on making money without looking at consequences, well, now it hits us back. It's a backlash. This model of economy is a robbery one and unsustainable. Does it mean that we have to go away from the market, from the economy, from business? Of course not. But but something else should be in focus for business assessment, productivity of and efficiency of use of resources. And it may be measured. I'm not going into details. But everything begins with us uh, forced to sustain the resources that we use for our business. If we don't do that, if we don't sustain resources, then we have the re robbery economy. And also productivity means that we meet the demands. Because if we meet the demands of people, real demands, then we sustain social environment, which is also important. It's an important resource. 
So the uh, economic statement is a result of the finances, but it has to be completed by the uh, statement of resources and the statement of the demands, the needs. So the uh, account of the usefulness of what we are doing. The other thing is the fact that we need to be aware that we need to talk about locating uh, production. It's the uh, our operations has to be localized. Why the food industry is strong? Because it has short chains. It is differentiated. It's its strength. It's uh, diversification. It's its strength. If we lose it, if we lose the locality as the very basis, then we will lose the competitiveness of the sector, which today is a strong export sector and gives us surplus. The third important thing is the naturalization of the uh, business. Well, we heard from the previous speaker about these uh, different types of vanilla or other types of tomatoes. Well, the thing is that if we don't naturalize our um, business, not only in agriculture, then we are not capable to sustain locality because the strength of locality has to be on naturalization of our business. Otherwise, we destroy the resources. We destroy soil. The production process, as we have now, destroys soil. So the productivity of soil, even if it's for agriculture, will be uh, decreasing. So these principles, plus some others, should set the new way of thinking about how we assess our uh, business. And also I wish to add that if we don't do it, then we'll face a lot of barriers. And I will tell you what kind of barriers will the Polish food industry meet, both the food articles and drinks. Uh, professor, you said about uh, supply chains for food, and now I wish to focus on this subject. The transformation begins in a globalized world with well-developed and long geographically uh, supply chains, and the relation of, um, of value of the global trade to the global GDP grew from 25% in the beginning of 1970s to almost 60%. Now, Coca-Cola has almost 16,000 uh, suppliers and Volkswagen Group some 40. Pandemic shook uh, the resilience of these relations. What kind of benefits we might have from shorter uh, supply chains, how they should be organized. Do we have any threats there? Thank you for this question, but before I start answering it, I want to refer to what Professor said, this regeneration. Well, I not necessarily uh, associate it with something pos uh, positive, but then to me it's like empathic regeneration, because having new measures of success, knowing new capabilities, API other than a profit or return on um, equity, well, it requires change of your mindset of the business leaders, including the investors. My question is whether it can be done, whether it can be accomplished, because we definitely need to have this change in the context of environment. Or shall we remain in the loop of uh, desire for profit and running after profit, which will not solve the problems you were talking about? And this is really an open question in our bank. While we define our average medium-term strategy, we set a lot of objectives about sustainable development. Which, is, which define what will be the contribution of the transactions which support uh, investment uh, energy project or climate project in the operation of our bank. And we will be trying to account for that. I do hope that we are a forerunner and we will set a good example, but it has to be a massive phenomenon. And getting back to this question, 
The results of these Paris supply chains are visible in many sectors still. You know it. How difficult it is today to buy a new car. It's difficult to produce it. and You can't produce a new car in time which we are used to because we have a deficit of computer chips on the market because they are produced for all the sectors in uh, remote locations and the producers because of the higher demand they had to make choices and because the uh, automobile industry treated chip producers in a brutal way then the producers now have chosen the computer IT sector which they supply more eagerly to which is why we have an issue with new uh, vehicle production I'm happy that Peter is nodding so I, I hope I'm right and we have seen growing costs of transport of logistics we see this phenomenon of uncertainty whether this uh, whether our trade partner in remote location, a different legal system where they have to overcome long distances, whether they would really be able to deliver on time what we really need for production. So we may take it that uh, out of the offshoring, uh, moving your production to remote, cheap locations will be uh, heading to the nil sharing, which is to having the key producers to get closer to the place where the final product is manufactured, which may mean location of production in country where the main manufacturing plant is located, which may mean your neighboring country. But I think this reflection will be more sustainable that uh, searching for the cheapest place of production, irrespective of the distance about um, and uh, irrespective of the risk, will be uh, now uh, canalized into more responsible thinking that this production should be located closer even if it's more expensive but then it is more foreseeable what do you think about that professor well i would want to see changes in this process of these uh, trade uh, chains it's not only supply chains however this is what we what is most pay, uh, painful to us we don't have containers from china and in Poland, in our industry, we have a lot of bottlenecks now. When we look at uh, any type of raw material to production, we have an issue with it. But I would like to see this location process as a um, conscious choice. That when the business is uh, away from this territory, it will never be responsible. If we want the behaviors to be environmentally responsible, and those who run the businesses, they need to suffer the consequences of the fact that they destroy the um, environment uh, uh, operating. When they are a global company at every place and many multinationals, they have no asset. They have only, they put together virtually and different suppliers, making them dependent on them and enforcing behaviors which would push up the, uh, push down the um, margin then we have the results as we have. As for the regener regeneration, the thinking that it must refer to the co-responsibility, this social aspect, this is very important because I think that we should move on to banking sector right now. I am not going to uh, talk about uh, the, the bank that you represent, but I can see this is the search for new approach, for new thinking, so I applaud this. Banks uh, have become the part of um, a play on uh, shares. If this brings more return on investment than development investments, then we have this issue that we have very little uh, development investments and we have a problem right now because the approach is to participate in the play based on the shares, on assets and not what primarily the investment was all about. So we need banks that want, together with the clients, change 
the methods within the economy. Banks are necessary for people who want to create uh, what I'm talking about. Without uh, loans, without cooperation, without finances, we won't go far. There is, it's not possible. So some banks say we don't want to finance any activities combining coal. Okay, this is the first step. But then they say what they are going to finance, this regeneration, is a positive thinking approach. We don't say not this, not this, not that. We are not talking about bans. Well, I grabbed the, the microphone, but uh, uh, first I would like to make a short quiz. Uh, who uh, saw I the movie Inside Job? It was uh, from two 2010. This is a movie I saw for the first uh, uh, for the first time a long time ago, and I've seen it seven times, and I uh, watch that from time to time. This is a movie about what banking should not be about. It talks about the crisis of a global financial crisis, 2008-2009, explains what happened, what were the reasons for it, poses questions like um, how with instruments that are of very poor quality, quality, and then we can build a structure that by the rating company is going to assess three A, so the highest quality of assets. And this is what you mentioned. This is this play with the assets. This is not what banking should be about. Banking should be about cooperation, financing appropriate uh, undertakings, supporting entrepreneurs in their business, but also ethical empathic goals, and this is the part we should uh, um, follow, uh, even if we do not have such high return on investments like investment banks in the U.S. before the global financial crisis. For many years, we do not fi we are not financing um, um, various undertakings, um, the mining, uh, coal-based investments, and some other tobacco or um, animal um, fair animal. Um, greed. Uh, and this is like that. So it means that the bank uh, gave up a uh, certain volume in terms of profit. It was a very conscious decision. More important were the values and responsible approach than just our financial result in the bank. So this is uh, this more negative aspect, but it's also crucial. Banks do not finance uh, coal-based energy. Um, do not support the development of this energy. If we do not support this one, then we have alternative sources of energy, and then we have less and less share of global-based energy in Poland. So we need entities who re are going to support renewable sources of energy. So we raise our hand here because we've been doing that uh, related to big energy-based projects, uh, wind power or PV projects, but we are also doing that in terms of individual uh, PV systems in Poland. We are doing that um, right now and we are going to do that in the future. And this is also business. So this is also important than our thinking about various uh, responsible activities, preventing climate catastrophe. They um, should not only refer to value and empathy, but this is also business-based thinking. The banks, such banks, uh, are going to succeed on any level uh, because in a wise way, they are going to incorporate this uh, responsible thinking into their business strategies. I have a feeling, and I'm almost sure that we are um, succeeding in doing that. We wait for your feedback now and in the future. But um, this is the path that uh, we need to follow. Let's pay attention to one more thing. This uh, issue did not relate only to the fact that some economic uh, activities uh, were more profitable, but also uh, the profit uh, to have more profit for us 
uh, referred to loss on the other part. So uh, it generated some negative effects on uh, other parties. So this is really wrong approach. This model is wrong because the entire sphere dominated the, the financial sphere dominated the production, so we need to bring the balance back. Uh, I'm not saying that banks or financing is not necessary. We, uh, without this, we can't uh, go forward. But the drive of the economy, this is not only the financing. This is just adding the element without which we can't take risks. If we don't do that, uh, it will be very short-term approach. If we talk about serious investments, uh, even if we talk about locating a new uh, networks, new supplies, and we base on uh, locality up, and not from the global aspect that um, makes us dependent on each other, then we know that these are undertakings based on cooperation and trust. If you want to build a factory in Poland, you need to know that you have a, you are going to have a profit in four years. You can't build a factory if the first ba uh, if the first indexes we can't can't be calculated. Um, um, the Results of uh, big businesses are really good, and one of the sectors we discussed today, they have uh, less favorable results because it's it's a bit uh, lower in terms of beverage production. We can't look only at the profitability because it also refers to the increase in prices. But we need to know how we use our asset in a very productive way. In uh, our university, uh, we do the analysis, and I also uh, submitted them here. From my side, uh, before uh, we are going to talk about the banking approach, I want to say that before this strong sector of economy, this is our national um, industry, um, we are facing here challenges. I mentioned it before, the consumption of energy. So we need a very comprehensive approach. What to do so that this energy consumption is gradually reduced without um, decreasing the quality. One of the elements is to ch change the consumption of energy. Then another challenge, the issue of water. And I want to emphasize that amelioration activities, this is not enough. We need to think about new retention system in the, in the cities and in the rural areas. The third element I want to mention, transport and logistics. Uh, it has been changing. We need different institutional structure for this sector in terms of transport and logistics. And another issue, the packaging, also because of the directives that are going to be compulsory for us, the directive on extended responsibility of producers. The role of the country is uh, vital, and we need to demand uh, the development of this sector. Thank you very much. Time is running really fast. I have more questions, but I'm afraid I won't be able to uh, ask them because we uh, don't have um, enough time. Uh, we are facing an uh, inevitable challenge, uh, a costly challenge. We believe that the food uh, sector and all the persons here in the room and uh, on the internet uh, will join the avant-garde of grain transformation. Uh, anthropologist Margaret Mead said recently, do not doubt that a group of uh, a small group of people could change the world. Uh, this is the one thing that changed this world. Uh, I leave you with this quote and I invite you to the next part of our conference. Thank you. Thank you very much.